Hello and welcome back to All About Russia. My name is Andrew and today we'll be looking at the Bryansk Blast. The Bryansk Blast is located in the west of Russia, in the central federal district and in the central economic region. It shares borders with the Smolensk and Kaluga Blasts to the north, the Oryol and Kursk Blasts to the east, and has borders with the nations of Ukraine to the south and Belarus to the west. The blast is 13,500 square miles in size, making it the 62nd largest federal district and larger than the Netherlands. Just over a million people live near Blast, making it the 38th most populous part of the Russian Federation. Nearly a third of Bryansk is forested, whilst a quarter of the land is under cultivation. 18% of the entire blast is meadows and steppe land, with nearly 4% consisting of water. The remaining land is a mixture of herbal settlement and gentle hills. The longest river in the Oblast is the Desna at over 300 miles long. The highest point in the Oblast is occupied by the village of Mejnik, which stands at 300 meters above sea level. The Oblast runs on Moscow standard time. The coat of arms of the Bryansk region is a French blue shield with the blue symbolizing Slavic unity. In the lower part of the shield, three golden rays diverge from one point, dividing the shield into three parts, each of which is a symbol of the unity of the Slavic states of Russia, Belarus and Ukraine. At the top of the shield is a stylized image of a golden spruce, with a three-tiered crown as a symbol of the Bryansk forest. Against the background of the central part, there is the coat of arms of the city of Bryansk. The emblem is bordered with an oak wreath defining the status of the region as a subject of the Russian Federation. The sickle and hammer represent both the industry and labour of the people of the region, but hark back to the fact that the region was created during the Soviet period alone. The flag of the oblast is this same image on a burgundy background, the burgundy representing those who fought and fell during the Second World War. Both the state flag and heraldry were officially adopted on the 5th of November 1998. The Bryansk Blast is split into 30 administrative districts, with the capital being, perhaps not surprisingly, the city of Bryansk. Interestingly, whilst there are no closed city in the Oblast, these regions have restrictions due to radioactive elements within them. Archaeologists have traced human settlement in the Bryansk region all the way back to 70,000 years ago, with tools being discovered in the Zakovsky district. Who these people were we may never know, as from this period different groups move into the Bryansk region, each leaving behind evidence of their own culture and way of living. By the Iron Age, a people whose culture we call Yuknoi were living in the Bryansk region, known for making temples with special reverence to bears. At the start of the 6th century, Baltic people were living in the Bryansk region. As Slavic tribes moved into the area, conflict over farmland appears to have erupted and several mass graves have been found of people of Baltic origin. These Slavic newcomers were not, however, a united force. The primary chronicle records there being three distinct groups living in the region. The Radimici, the Viatici and the Northerners. All three of these groups, however, by the 9th century, were paying tribute to the Khazars. With the rise of Kievan Rus under Prince Oleg in the 9th century, their allegiance would soon change. By 907 AD, both the Northerners and the Radimici had been coerced into paying tribute to Kievan Rus instead of the Khazars. With the coming of Sviatoslav the Brave and his campaign against the Khazars in 964 AD, the remaining Vyachi tribes were brought to heel and all the people in the Bryansk Blast were paying tribute to Kiev. The relations between the Vyachi tribes and Kiev were turbulent at best. Vladimir the Great himself had to arrange several sorties against the rebellious Vyachi to coerce them into paying tribute. With the death of Vladimir the Great, Kievan Rus fractured, with the Bryansk Blast being incorporated into the Chernigov Principality under Prince Mstislav. Upon Mstislav's death, the Bryansk lands were reincorporated into Kievan Rus, but they would remain administered as part of the Chernigov Principality until 1097. At this point, a council of princes from Kievan Rus decided to incorporate the Bryansk lands into the Novgorod Sersky Principality. Officially, the city of Bryansk was founded during this period in 1146 as Debransk. However, 
Archaeologists believe this may not be correct, as there is evidence of an earlier settlement from at least the middle of the 10th century. Interestingly, the original name of the city, Debransk, comes from an old Slavic word, Debra, meaning wooded, hence Debransk meaning place of the woods. By all accounts, at this moment in time, Bryansk was not a very important place and would remain fairly insignificant until the Mongol invasion. In 1237, the Mongol hordes swept through Kievan Rus, burning, pillaging and raiding as they went. By 1239, the Mongols had reached the land we know as Bryansk today and quickly established their dominance, asserting their right to appoint the princes of the land. The Chernigov princes were commanded to pay tribute to the Mongols in their capital Sarai or face certain destruction. One such prince, Mikhail of Chernigov, who had been given his principality by the Mongols, refused to bow to their idols and was executed in 1246. As a reprisal for this defiance, the Mongols set out and burned his capital of Chernigov, forcing the princely family to flee north to the safety of the woods and Bryansk. Mikhail's son, Roman, who was appointed to the new prince of Chernigov by the Mongols, made Bryansk his new capital and regularly paid tribute to the Mongols hereafter. Whilst he may have paid tribute, his descendants, however, did not. And in 1310, the Mongols, as another reprisal raid to the defiance from the Chernigov princes, burned down Bryansk and forced it to be incorporated into the Principality of Smolensk. As we mentioned in the Belgorod episode, check that out if you haven't, marriage between Eastern European royal families left to a changing of allegiance and therefore borders in a way that would not make sense today. This was the case in 1356 when King Algirdas of Lithuania inherited the Bryansk land and incorporated it into the Kingdom of Lithuania, later to be the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Whilst on the eastern edge of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, the Bryansk Oblast was spared the worst of the Tatar raids, protected by its heavy woods and richer targets either side. Nevertheless, Bryansk was a Russian city on Russian soil and this was something the growing power of the Duchy of Moscow never forgot. At the start of the 16th century, war broke out between the growing power of the Duchy of Moscovy and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, with the Bryansk land being reclaimed by Ivan. The position of Bryansk at this time was delicate to say the least. With the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth to the west and the Crimean Tatars to the south, it made sense to fortify Bryansk. This was a sensible choice of action as relations deteriorated between the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and Moscow. Throughout the 16th century, fighting occurred between these two powers with the Bryansk Oblast being dead set in the middle. The end of the 16th century proved disastrous for the Bryansk lands. With the coming of the Time of Troubles, Bryansk was raised, rebuilt and attacked again, all within the space of the same year. By 1618, the southern and western parts of what we know as Bryansk Oblast today had actually been ceded back to the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. It wouldn't be until 1667 when the Bryansk lands would be reunited. Throughout the 17th century, Bryansk would remain an apple of discord between the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and the Tsardom of Russia. Thus, when Alexei I came to power, he immediately started fortifying the city again. And yet, due to the city's unique location between Ukraine, Poland and Russia, it was not only a fortification that happened of the area, but also something of an economic revival. The fair that took place at the Svenskaya Monastery was one of the largest in the 18th century for all of Europe. Furthermore, old believers who had been cast out as heretics for retaining the old style of making the cross in their religious services moved to the wooded Bryansk region, bringing their trades and skills with them. In 1709, the Bryansk region was incorporated into the Kiev province. This changed in 1727 with the incorporation of the Bryansk province, with its capital, of course, at Bryansk. Eventually, in 1778, the Bryansk province was abolished and the area was incorporated into the Oriol government. Nearly 20 years later, it was then rebranded as the Oriol province. The changing borders at this time represent the changes that were happening in the Oblast itself. Much like in the Belgorod video, honestly check it out if you haven't, the changes corresponded with the changing nature of how the land was being used. Throughout the 18th century, as the Russian Empire expanded on all fronts, Bryansk changed from being a frontier military outpost 
to being safely behind the lines and something of an industrial area. In 1736, the Bryansk flotilla had been constructed, intended to use the huge wooden reserves of the Bryansk region to build ships to which to fight the Turks. This prompted a huge number of carpenters and woodworkers to move to the Bryansk blast. They were joined over 40 years later by many manufacturing industries as cannon and ammunition started to be produced in the Bryansk Blast. Throughout the 18th century, many industries began to grow in the Bryansk region, including notably glass production, with the sands in Bryansk proving to make fantastic glassware. Even Napoleon's invasion in 1812 didn't cause a serious economic backlog for the city. And with its connection to Moscow by rail, in 1868, more people flooded into the oblast. By 1914, over 30,000 people lived and worked in Bryansk itself. With the coming of the 1917 revolution, the region as a whole declared for the provisional government, although there were some Bolshevik activism within the factorial sectors. However, much of the land we know as Bryansk today was actually claimed by the People's Belarusian Republic in 1918. This included Bryansk itself. With German assistance, the region was incorporated into the Belarusian state. However, this only lasted for about a year, and the Red Army, aided by Bolshevik insurrectionists within the region itself, retook the area and willingly joined the Russian Soviet Republic. By 1920, the region was rebranded as the Bryansk province. Throughout the Civil War, whilst there was no direct fighting that took place in the Bryansk Blast, many people and resources were pulled from that area to keep the rest of the Soviet state afloat. With the end of the fighting of the Civil War, the Bryansk Blast was incorporated into the Western region in 1929. Eight years later, the map was redrawn again to put the Bryansk Blast into the Oriol Oblast. Following the end of the Civil War, the region rapidly began to develop as an industrial centre, with people moving across the Soviet Union to work in the factories being constructed in Bryansk. In addition to building factories, the Soviet state also built the Bryansk Regional Theatre in 1926 and the Bryansk State Technical University three years later. With the start of the Second World War, Bryansk was right in the path of the Nazi war machine. On the 6th of October 1941, German forces occupied the city and would remain there until 1943. However, they did not remain in control of the forests and upwards of 60,000 people fled into the Bryansk forests acting as partisans throughout the war years. Sniping, sabotage and general destruction made them a thorn in the Nazi side and inflicted huge casualties all throughout the war years. As the Red Army retook the city, the fighting that had happened around Bryansk had caused many of the buildings to be levelled and their city, much like the Oblast, was left in ruins. On the 5th of July 1944, the Bryansk Blast as we know it today was formed. The end of the Second World War saw another great influx of people from across the Soviet Union to the Bryansk Blast, helping to rebuild and undo the damage that had been done to it. Factories and industries were restored to pre-war levels and new industries such as chemical engineering and locomotive construction were introduced as well. Development continued apace even up to the 1986 Chernobyl disaster which left parts of the western region irradiated. The fall of the Soviet Union in 1991 hit the Bryansk region hard. The Bryansk blast largely fell under communist leadership during these post-communist years and thus in 1997 a deal with Moscow was made. In return for federal funds, the government would support Moscow in the state Duma. Five years later, this deal was rescinded and the communist governor, Yuri Lodkin, was barred from rerunning from office on what appears to be quite dodgy grounds. Today, Bryansk is one of the poorer regions of the Russian Federation, despite its brilliant position for trade, facing a population flight and irradiation to the west. As before stated, the Bryansk Blast is one of the poorer regions of the Russian Federation, ranked at 55th in 2017 by gross domestic product. The city of Bryansk itself remains an industrial hub, with many industries such as chemical engineering, metalworking, locomotive construction and textiles still operating in the city. In addition to these established industries, a few new enterprises have popped up, including the Pigar Russian Cigar Company, 
the only manufacturer of Russian cigars. Whilst farming does remain a vital part of the Oblast economy, the levels of farming have been reduced by up to 50% from the 1950 levels. This is largely due to the irradiation of the soil in the west of the Oblast. Tourism in the Oblast is in relatively low numbers, which seems a shame as the Oblast is littered in Orthodox monasteries, historical sites and eco-friendly tourist spots, including the Bryansk Forest Reservation, which holds some of the last European bison. The population of the Oblast is a little over 1 million people, which is down from the 2002 census. The capital, Bryansk, boasts nearly half a million people living there, which again is lower than the 2002 census. The population is nearly entirely Russian at over 95%. The next largest ethnic group are Ukrainians at a little over 1%. Belarusians, Armenians and Roma all make up small communities at not even half a percentage, while the remainder is made up of a variety of small ethnic groups. The birth rate in the Oblast is 1.56, which is lower than the national average and down from the 1990 rate. As of the 2012 census, over 50% of the population are Christian, with the vast majority being Russian Orthodox. Over a third of people declare themselves spiritual but not religious, with just over 5% of all people declaring atheism. A tiny sliver of the population declared their adherence to the ancient Slavic faith of Rodnoveri, with the remainder giving no official answer. Drug abuse in the Bryansk Oblast is relatively high, with it exceeding the national average. Alcoholism is a major problem in the Oblast as well, with incidents of alcohol abuse nearly double the national average. As previously mentioned, historically the region fell into the Red Belt, those areas that continued to vote for communist leadership even after the fall of the Soviet Union. The current governor of the Oblast is Alexander Bogomaz, who has been in power since September 2015, when the previous governor was indicted for abuses of office. Alexander Bogomaz was born in the Bryansk Oblast and is, of course, a member of the United Russian Party. In the city of Bryansk, in addition to the many restaurants, clubs and theatres, there are several statues and monuments, such as the Monument to Alexander Perezvyet, a 13th century Russian monk who fought the Tatars, the Kurgan of Immortality, which honours those that fell in the Second World War, and the monument dedicated to those who perished due to the Chernobyl disaster. Leaving the city, the Bryansk Oblast is famous for its forest, which once covered near enough the entire Oblast, and today is largely a reservation for the last of the European bison. In addition to the forest, the town of Kalinsky, originally a settlement made by old believers, holds dozens of their ancient churches built largely out of wood. In museums, both in Klintzy and in Belgorod, there are even artefacts dating all the way back to the 6th century. The Bryansk Blast stands at the crossroads of greatness, with the potential to become a much more powerful part of the Russian Federation than it presently is. My name's Andrew and I hope you found this video interesting. Up next is the Buryat Republic. Пока!